So part of why I wanted to come here and, and talk tonight um, on behalf of Digital People is this is, I think, a very timely topic in our industry. As we change from a creative-based culture of ideas and images into one is really creating software and developing experiences for people to engage in. That's what people are looking for in digital. And there is this nonstop battle between creative and technology, thus the, the new industry buzzword of the past few years, creative technologies. And I think as it evolves, it's going to be very challenging for agencies and, and, recruit, and recruitment companies not only to find these people, but to cultivate these people. Because as they're identified and developed, they're gonna be very marketable people that are gonna be teaching other people to do what they do. So how do we create a funnel of new talent that is going to be the creative directors and the technology directors and the strategists and the account people of tomorrow that are gonna help companies take their brands into the digital age, but also across multiple channels. Um, and that'll be interesting for me to see how, how digital people finds those people and how agencies interact and keep them busy and keep them engaged. It's, a, it's actually kind of an exciting time to be in this business. In advertising, we focus a lot of our effort around what's going on in marketing. How are we going to get people interested in what we're doing, engaged with our product? That is where a lot of the efforts are. But when you really look at it from a digital perspective, you got to understand what is the business trying to do online? Because if they really want to do a digital initiative, it's going to cost a lot of money. Are we trying to service customers? Are we trying to convert people? Are we trying to get rid of a manual process and somehow automate it? Most good digital projects have an operations component to it. If you think of a banking site or a travel site, or an online retail site, or social commerce. There is something from an operational perspective it's trying to achieve. It's trying to bring you some utility that this company or this brand that you like to, to interact with, it's trying to bring it to you online. It's trying to make it, make it easier. Um, there's the IT organization. I want to talk about that a little bit. But really what digital strategy, it's lining all of these things up for the business and then understanding what does the user want from this. Because users don't care about your business objectives, they don't care about your crappy IT department or what you're trying to do in operations. They want to go online, they want to get what they're doing for their own personal needs, and they want to do it right now. One of the biggest challenges that I think that uh, agencies have is the separation between this department and this department. Websites and software grew up in IT and it's slowly being taken over by marketing. Um, it's gonna take time. They don't communicate well, they don't talk well. I don't know if anybody noticed, but when Barry Judge, who was the CMO at Best Buy for 10 years just left, they replaced him with a CIO from Starbucks. So that, I think, was a very deliberate move to say, we want a marketer who actually thinks like an in, in information technologist. It will be interesting to see how that, happens, how that pans out. So what is really bad digital, in my opinion? Well, it really comes down to the process of agencies. I'm gonna say 90% of the time when I was working with JWT directly or consulting with other agencies, we usually get a TV ad that would get delivered to us and say, can we do something digital with this? And of course, you'd have to be diplomatic. Well, we'll try, no, you can't. You already did it. There's nothing that we can really do with this. And that is why you see so many websites, especially consumer-focused sites, that are doing nothing but showing the commercial that you already saw on TV. I cannot tell you the number of websites I've gone to where they're just showing the same damn commercial. So I go to TridentGum.com to see the commercial that drove me there in the first place. It's crazy. And I put this one up because I pitched this account quite some time ago, and they were very upset about this. But what I understood and realized is it really was their own problem getting away. The, the clients sometimes, they invest a lot of time and energy in commercials and other things and they really want to reuse it. And they didn't want to understand why do people go online to find a gum relationship. They didn't believe people did until we showed them a Facebook community that had 56,000 members who were all bemoaning the fact that strawberry bubblicious tried and gum went away. They didn't realize that there was this, this, this energy out there. 
there are still a lot of companies that do this, although it's, it's getting much, much better. I want to talk about two really bad examples, or really bad experiences that I went through. And not all of them were bad. I have had some successes, and I have had a lot of fun along the way as well. But this first one, and this is where I had to disguise what the product was. It was an analgesic, okay, an aspirin substitute. And what they had is they had two products. And one of the key attributes of one product was it was fast acting. And the second one specifically targeted back pain, chronic condition. And then what was the assignment? And I love this. They had $150,000 budgeted for each. They could do a TV spot for that amount of money for each, but then they wouldn't have any media buy to run it. So they said, you know, can we do something digital with it? And they actually said this, maybe viral videos. I always like that kind of thing. So we were very excited about this because they came and here we had an opportunity to do everything. There couldn't be a brand component to it. We had a budget, so we, I pulled my team together and we really dug into this. We pulled comm score data and we went out and we looked at compete data. We pulled log files, found all these different things about what was going on in the social space through Radian 6 and Sysmos and started really charting what was the opportunity online for both of these products. And it took, it took a matter of weeks to actually get through all that and do it. What we found at the end, when we put our presentation together, and the way it works is you present first to the traditional agency and their account team, and then they decide that they're gonna go and present it to the client. Um, we said, you know what? Fast acting aspirin, nobody goes online looking for that. Everything that we looked for headaches and everything else that was really centered around associated with chronic conditions, but it was also associated with lawyers and other things. It was just, it was too elusive a topic to go after, and people just were not that excited. If they have a headache, they take some aspirin. That's the way they work at it. A chronic condition, on the other hand, lots of information on that. Lots of communities, lots of conversations, and not just back pain, but migraine arthritis, all types of things that were going on out there. And there was this huge untapped community. And we looked at it and we said, we have all this content. The site you have is terrible. Nobody is going to go out there and look at it. Can't we leverage the content that we have, chart out where these places are going, and let's spend all $300,000 on creating an online back pain resource. And then we'll have it moderated. We'll have a navigator that's actually going to go out and engage with influencers. And let's build this beachhead. And then next year, when your budget resets, then we can start tying in some advertising campaigns to it. Very excited. It made so much sense to all of us. So we got together, presented it to the account team. And after I heard the pin drop, the account team looked at us and said, this is just ridiculous. This is tactical. This is not strategic really laid into us, and so I kept my cool. My team was very upset, but kept their cool. And we said, well, what were you thinking? And they had gone off and done their own ideating. They said, well, fast acting has a larger market opportunity than back pain. So we want to do fast ads on fast sites that people go to because they like things that are fast. I said, what? Well, like the bullet train or the NASCAR website or something like that. So I, we were trying to be reasonable, and we said, so you want to spend $150,000 on fast moving ads on sites that you think people go to because they like fast things? Yes. That made absolute sense to them. And so I sat there and I thought for a second, okay, if we had $10 million and we could do fast, quirky ads and maybe, you know, sponsor a NASCAR thing and do all these things, okay, maybe... Maybe something like that could happen. But you don't have that. You got $300,000, and that isn't going to happen. You're going to throw stones in the ocean. Well, we would rather have a deeper brand engagement. And I asked, what is that? I don't even know what that means. The meeting devolved very quickly after that. It was just one of those ones where you walk out and you say, what just happened here? So as it happens with agencies, the account team goes and runs to their Know, management supervisor runs to the president, escalated all the way to the top, and there was a very reasonable head of strategy that said, no, this makes sense. Show this to the client. This makes sense. They don't have the budget to do what you guys are talking about. Do this. 
So we went and we presented it to the client, and nobody from the traditional side showed up. The client loved it. And they said, we need to do this with our other products around um, migraines and arthritis, all these different things. We really need to take control of our niche products. And we left thinking that this was going to happen. We were really excited. And then a dawning reality came in afterwards. Nothing happened. Why do you think that is? A good account person can kill any project they want by doing nothing. Anybody who's worked in agency business long enough knows that a good account person with a good relationship can tank any idea or talk the client in and out of anything. And in this case, they did nothing. And they forgot about it and it just went away. And I think ultimately they went back to fast ads that, you know, insights of people into it because like these are the facts. That was one of the harder ones I'd ever gone through in terms of a defeat. There was one more, though, that was maddening. It was an airline. And as happens, when people have bad digital presences, and this is what companies will do, they ignore them and they pretend that they don't exist. Yeah, we got a crappy website, we got a crappy experience, but we just don't talk about it, maybe, but nobody will really notice that it's that bad. Well, this particular airline, Forrester, called them out, and they did a vertical industry survey, and they were ranked the worst experience for a vacation website in the entire world. That got their attention. So then what happens? Well, I just love this. What was the assignment? We want to take the vacation website from worst to first. Not only that, they wanted to create a new category. I love it. You're the worst there possibly can be, and in the next 12 months, you actually think you're going to become the best that can possibly be? Okay, well, look, we'll deal with it. They also said, don't reinvent the wheel. Now, this was a big challenge because I was part of a holding company. We were brought in on the digital end. There was another lead agency that lost this work that was part of the same old com holding company and as you know, sisters in arms, we were supposed to work together on this and work really hard. Well, as we dug in on the digital side to what was really going on, it was a horrifying mess because they had all these islands of information. They had their saver system for booking and scheduling that was not connected to their passenger system, that was not connected to the reward system. So you go through the site, you'd have to constantly re-log in with different usernames and passwords, just the worst possible user experience. So single sign-on was a big part of our recommendation as we went through it. And then we started actually leveraging a lot of research about what do people do when they're going out and looking at vacation websites. And there's really a process. There's the dreaming process, where do I want to go, what do I want to do? There's the planning process, and then there's the booking process. And if you think about it, if you're planning a dream vacation or another vacation, kind of follow that. Where do I want to go? What do I want to do? So we started looking at all the things that were out there, and the idea that we came up with was, look, let's have a site that does nothing but highlight vacation destinations. But not only that, let's read their cookie cache. Let's see what sites they're going to, and maybe they're interested in Mexico. And let's show them a little graph that such says what our best deal to Mexico is right now. And then let's tie it into the reviews at TripAdvisor. Why should we create our own review system? TripAdvisor has the best review system in the world. Let's tie this in. And then let them create their own vacation and maybe push it out through, um, was it Social Connect at the time? I think it's something else. They can post it on Facebook, get their friends to comment, get their friends engaged, and really just create one of these experiences where I want to go there and everything is there and it's at your fingertips. Um, very expensive to do. It was going to take a long time to do, but we really felt we had hit it. But I didn't realize, so we were doing this part and the other agency still got to do the interface design. Well, what I didn't realize is they had been briefed completely separately and when they came back, they had a concept that followed their ad campaign, which was the excitement of planning a vacation. So you came to the site, and this was their idea. We we're all in a presentation doing this, hadn't briefed each other on it. The first thing you do is you enter in your dates. And if the dates are in the winter, the background turns to snow. If it's in the summer, the background turns to summer. And then you go ahead and pick the destination, and then a suitcase opens up on the bed. And if you're going to a summer destination, well, then all of a sudden summer clothes go in there, or ski clothes, or whatever it was. And I just sat there horrified and realized they were trying to take their ad 
and somehow make it into a digital concept, but it wasn't doing anything for anyone. It absolutely blew up at that point. And part of it was really the client's fault because the brand group didn't like interlopers coming in, the IT group wanted somebody in, so it was, you know, the client had a little problems too. But it was this whole idea of, we looked at ideas, big ideas, very, very differently. Very, very differently. So what was my conclusion? Big ideas are cool. In the advertising world, there are these things that capture imagination, the cultural zeitgeist, the, you know, it, 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 it inspires you. It makes you want to do something or be something. There's a wonderful article that appeared in Fast Company called The Future of Advertising, and you can find it online. And the woman talks about that, how sometimes there are these transformational brand advertising campaigns that just grab you, grip you, and then turn you into an advocate. She estimates that all time, since the beginning of advertising, there's maybe a couple of dozen that fit that bill. Very, very hard to do, but that's what big ideas 